Welcome back to the bench with the rusty ICOM 735. Well, well, this is something new. So I got online and I ordered this, which is the USB CT17 USB cable for the uh, ICOM. And there's a remote jack in the back of the ICOM, which just looks like a eighth inch mono jack. And it plugs into a, the USB end here. And when I plugged it in, this old copy of Windows loaded the driver automatically. And then I downloaded a, a program called FL Rig, and I'll start that up and show you. So it's called FL Rig. And there's the icon for FL Rig. And it starts up like that. And we need to go in and tell it. So it knows the transceiver is not responding. So we're going to do config and setup and transceiver. And then we're going to tell it that this is an ICOM 735. So I'll type IC-735. If the menu is down, IC-735. And that shows up. I'll click on that. And then we will say... COM3, at least on this machine, and it sets it up automatically at 1200. And it said uh, online somewhere that it should be uh, 8 bits and one stop bit, but it came up with two. So far that's working. So then I clicked activate. And let's see, the previous time it said the frequency of the rig. Let's see, we did activate, yes. Oh, and init, sorry. Okay, so now we've read the VFO off the radio. You can see they both agree at 13070. So it doesn't give you uh, many controls. Some radios apparently support a whole bunch of stuff. The uh, old 735 doesn't support too much. So I was a little bummed because I didn't see a band megahertz or kilohertz, but it turns out if you uh, click on the bottom of each number, for example, the bottom of the one, that set to, sets it to zero. Now we're at 3070, so I click on the top of the three, and there's seven megahertz. And then we can go down by, oh, and so this has happened a few times. So FL rig occasionally crashes, and it seems to be when I click too quickly on too many things. So. Let's go back and try that again, because I think we have to wait for it to close and then restart. So the good news is I've been able to control frequency and mode, so it'll set either CW, SSB, etc. And I can control up and down which megahertz I'm on and any of the frequency buttons. So while we wait for it to crash, <laughs> and restart, we will, uh, let's see, we'll go back to CW and I'll use the uh, rusty mic and we'll, let's see, we'll get back to uh, here. And I'll use kilohertz to get down a ways. It's taking longer to crash and we can come back up this time. So I've got the passband tuning really narrow, although the band seems to be a little bit quieter. I was S5 last night for noise. And I guess I'm still S5, so the notch filter was on. I don't have a CW filter, so the passband tuning is as close as I get. So that is at least sounding better. Let's close the program. There we go. Now it's closing. And we'll restart it again and, and sort of go through that setup. So we're going to go back to FL Rig again. And start the FL Rig program. And we know we're not responding. Then we do config, setup, transceiver. And we do... IC 
0.735 and we say activate and init Oh, I didn't set up the COM port, sorry about that. I gotta set that up to COM3. Then we can say init. You can see it read the frequency off the radio, so now they agree. So I think it's gonna be an okay thing to play with. I have to say it's not quite like spinning a tuning dial, but I can, uh, for example, tune down or up by a kilohertz. Or, not, <laughs> well, if you ask me how's it working, I'd say it's okay, but uh, don't click too fast. So I think that'll be my introduction to FL Rig. It does definitely connect. Um, it wasn't hard to set up. Like I say, I bought the cable, plugged it in, the driver loaded automatically. I downloaded FLRig.exe, installed it, and uh, that was all the setup. And you saw that, which is just. Uh, basically setting up which transceiver you have and I'll do it one more time so config oops close config setup transceiver and we'll find our icon again and com3 And we'll do activate and then I'm gonna do init and hope for the best all right well there we are it set us into AM mode I don't know if we asked for that or not but we're gonna set it back to CW so that works and I'm not sure, I think I would actually probably tune with the mic because it actually seems easier to sort of get past a few kilohertz or with the variable speeds on the button, either single clicks or holding it down. That seems like an okay way to, to uh, tune it. And like I say, I can change megahertz here. So there's 30 meters. And then let's see, we could go up a mega uh, up here to, to 10.1. And then I can tune with the mic. I don't hear a lot there. But <laughs> at least until the IR receiver comes for the uh, for the controller to get the main tuning working again, at least the uh, rusty icon can get on the air. So there you go. Thank you. See you later.